Well, thank you, Crystal, for that kind introduction. It's an absolute privilege to be joining Pathway and the Faculty for Homeless and Inclusion Health for your ninth international symposium, speaking alongside Professor Danny Dawling, who I understand we're going to hear from later, but also, more importantly, the Pathway experts by experience, who I met about 20 minutes ago. They seem like a very uh, lively bunch. I look forward to hearing your insights on how government can better support your efforts and the vital work of Pathway and other homeless healthcare charities as we emerge from the COVID pandemic. And speaking of efforts and vital work going on in this space, I'm very pleased to hear of the emerging merging of Pathways with Crisis. This is a, a welcome collaboration and an important step to address the health and support needs of people experiencing homelessness. Now, before I was appointed Minister for Rough Sleeping and Housing, I worked as the Deputy Chief Exec of YMCA Birmingham. That was a char small charity for young, formerly homeless people. So I saw firsthand the tireless work of both the voluntary sector and healthcare professionals working on the front line who were so invested in each and every person they helped. My time at YMCA and as a cabinet member in the local government taught me something that I suspect everyone on today's call recognises, that no one comes off the streets because of one single agency's work, and that it's only through effective partnership working between local authorities, healthcare partners and individual communities that people can actually receive the lasting and sustained help they need to turn their lives around. That's never been as true as it is today as we reflect on the unprecedented gains that have been made in reducing rough sleeping through this pandemic. The government launched Everyone In almost a year ago with the simple aim of bringing in as many people as possible off the streets. In the absence of any precedent, I don't think any of us could have imagined then what the programme would go on to achieve. The government's support behind an unshakable partnership between councils, charities and grassroots organisations Everyone in has helped at least 37,000 people into safe and secure accommodation. And research published in The Lancet shows that the measures we took in the first phase of the pandemic alone may have avoided 21,000 infections, 266 deaths, 1,100 hospital admissions and 330 intensive care admissions of homeless people. But those achievements aren't just a result of central government. They're largely owed to the incredible efforts of council officers, outreach workers and frontline staff working in extraordinary circumstances to meet the demands of the moment. Their work isn't always easy and it's certainly not glamorous. In fact, it often doesn't receive the attention or thanks it deserves. But without it, everything we have achieved together as a country over the last 12 months to reduce rough sleeping would never have been possible. I know I speak for all colleagues, both within my department and across government, when I say that for their selfless work over the last year, we will forever be in their debt. We owe it to them to make sure that the 37,000 vulnerable people helped by everyone in never return to life on the streets. And that starts with providing a home to people who have experienced rough sleeping, not just a bed or a shelter, but a home which is decent, safe and secure. And we brought forward an investment of £150 million to our Rough Sleeping Accommodation Programme to deliver more than 3,000 new homes this year. An additional £238 million will be invested over the course of the Parliament, providing 6,000 vital homes for people who have experienced rough sleeping. The largest ever investment of this kind and a lasting legacy of support for those helped by everyone in. We're determined to secure the gains we've made together over the last 12 months. So in November, we launched the £15 million Protect programme, ensuring councils continue to offer everyone rough sleeping on our streets somewhere safe to go. And we further boosted that support with the Protect Plus programme, helping councils redouble their efforts over the winter so that people sleeping rough are registered with a GP and are included in the vaccination programme for their area. Some of you may have seen the updated JCVI advice that was published last week. It reflects the additional challenges faced by people experiencing homelessness in accessing the COVID vaccine. 
It also sets out some important guidance for delivering the vaccine to people experiencing rough sleeping, and it recommends that they're treated as one of the key priority groups. I'd like to thank anyone here today directly or indirectly involved in this vital work of vaccine delivery, and I'd encourage them to consult the JCVI's updated guidance if they've not already done so. Our combined efforts to protect the most vulnerable at this critical time are clearly paying dividends. In the annual Rough Sleeping Snapshot published last month, we saw the overall number of people sleeping rough on the street fall for the third year in a row. Across England, the numbers have fallen dramatically by almost 40%. With some of our largest cities seeing reductions they could never have imagined even a short time ago. In Birmingham, just down the road from my own constituency, the snapshot records 17 people sleeping rough, down from 52 last year. A number of places have recorded no rough sleepers at all, including Ashford and Basingstoke. Proof that our manifesto commitment to end rough sleeping is an achievable goal and one which is closer than many would believe. And these aren't just numbers on a page. They represent lives rebuilt, families reconnected, and communities strengthened. Last month, my department received a note from a rough sleeper in Manchester. For privacy, we'll call her Lisa. The Protect program has provided Lisa and her partner temporary accommodation in an area close to her family, allowing her to reconnect with her dad and her young sons. Her partner, Gareth, has been placed on a methadone program and has started on the road to recovery. Lisa has told us that for the first time in years, she's been able to sleep properly without worrying about Gareth and his health. She's woken up feeling great and actually able to eat breakfast, something she's normally too stressed and anxious to do. She wanted to thank the council for the support they had received, for being patient and never giving up on them. For the first time in years, she told us she felt positive about her life. She knows that she and Gareth still have a long way to go, but just having people around them, believing in them and supporting them has made all the difference. Lisa's story speaks to something Pathways has been saying for a long time, that homelessness, homelessness is about healthcare as much as it is about housing. This government recognises that if we're serious about fulfilling our commitment, not just to continue reducing rough sleeping, but to end it completely, then we have to tackle its underlying causes. We're not coming as a shock to anyone here that a survey published by my department in December found that of all the respondents who had slept rough within the last year, 82% had a mental health vulnerability, 83% a physical health need, and 60% a substance misuse need. And for too long, these issues have not been treated with sufficient understanding or sufficient urgency. We're tackling this head on, delivering 23 million this financial year to provide substance misuse treatment for people sleeping rough on the streets, and we're doubling that figure for the coming year. This will provide the specialist support so many of these vulnerable individuals need, including those in emergency accommodation, to rebuild their lives and move into long-term housing. In addition, my department is working closely with the Department of Health and Social Care who are using £30 million secured through NHS England's long-term plan for specialist mental health services to help people sleeping rough. But beyond individual initiatives, we know that an all-encompassing approach is needed to address the diverse and often complex reasons people become homeless and turn to a life on the streets. Issues like unemployment, family breakdown, domestic abuse, criminal justice, immigration status, and yes, above all, health. As we begin to turn the tide on this pandemic, we will press ahead with our work to put in place a new cross-government strategy using the expertise of all departments from the Ministry of Justice and the Home Office to the Department of Health and Social Care and the Department of Work and Pensions. And in doing so, we will not just help more rough sleepers today, but also prevent people becoming homeless and falling into a life on the streets tomorrow. I don't underestimate for one moment the level of support needed to get this strategy and this marriage of health and housing to work. For the government's part, we're providing unprecedented support to tackle homelessness and rough sleeping over 
2021-22. This includes £676 million in resources funding to invest in preventative programmes and address the underlying issues early before they spiral out of control. That's an increase of 60% compared to the spending review figure in 2019. Proof that we recognise the scale of the challenge before us and will provide the funds to get the job done. At the heart of our strategy is a strengthening of partnerships between healthcare providers, local government and homelessness services, including the voluntary and community sectors. These partnerships have been and remain the driving force behind so many of the success stories we've seen over the last 12 months. And the Government Shares Pathway's central belief that these partnerships are integral, not just to reducing rough sleeping, but to ending it completely. Thanks to the incredible efforts of the NHS, local government and the voluntary sector, we've taken a giant leap forwards in protecting people experiencing rough sleeping. Let us now finish what we started and build a fairer, safer, and more neighbourly society as we emerge from the pandemic, one which ensures that absolutely everyone has access to a decent home and is given the chance to realise their own hopes, dreams and ambitions. Thank you.